An electric battery is a device consisting of two or more electrochemical cells that convert stored chemical energy into electrical energy. Each cell has a positive terminal, or cathode, and a negative terminal, or anode. The terminal marked positive is at a higher electrical potential energy than is the terminal marked negative. The terminal marked negative is the source of electrons that when connected to an external circuit will flow and deliver energy to an external device. When a battery is connected to an external circuit, electrolytes are able to move as ions within, allowing the chemical reactions to be completed at the separate terminals and so deliver energy to the external circuit. It is the movement of those ions within the battery which allows current to flow out of the battery to perform work. Although the term battery technically means a device with multiple cells, single cells are also popularly called batteries. Primary batteries are used once and discarded. The electrode materials are irreversibly changed during discharge. Common examples are the alkaline battery used for flashlights and a multitude of portable devices. Secondary can be discharged and recharged multiple times. The original composition of the electrodes can be restored by reverse current. Examples include the lead-acid batteries used in vehicles and lithium-ion batteries used for portable electronics. Batteries come in many shapes and sizes, from miniature cells used to power hearing aids and wristwatches to battery banks the size of rooms that provide standby power for telephone, exchanges and computer data centers. According to a 2005 estimate, the worldwide battery industry generates $48 billion in sales each year, with 6% annual growth. Batteries have much lower specific energy than common fuels such as gasoline. This is somewhat offset by the higher efficiency of electric motors in producing mechanical work, compared to combustion engines. History the usage of battery to describe a group of electrical devices dates to Benjamin Franklin, who in 1748 described multiple laden jars by analogy to a battery of cannon. Alessandro Volta built and described the first electrochemical battery, the voltaic pile, in 1800. This was a stack of copper and zinc plates, separated by brine-soaked paper discs that could produce a steady current for a considerable length of time. Volta did not appreciate that the voltage was due to chemical reactions. He thought that his cells were an inexhaustible source of energy, and that the associated corrosion effects at the electrodes were a mere nuisance, rather than an unavoidable consequence of their operation, as Michael Faraday showed in 1834. Although early batteries were of great value for experimental purposes, in practice their voltages fluctuated and they could not provide a large current for a sustained period. The Danielle cell, invented in 1836 by British chemist John Frederick Daniel, was the first practical source of electricity, becoming an industry standard and seeing widespread adoption as a power source for electrical telegraph networks. It consisted of a copper pot filled with a copper sulfate solution, in which was immersed an unglazed earthenware container filled with sulfuric acid and a zinc electrode. These wet cells used liquid electrolytes, which were prone to leakage and spillage if not handled correctly. Many used glass jars to hold their components, which made them fragile. These characteristics made wet cells unsuitable for portable appliances. Near the end of the 19th century, the invention of dry cell batteries, which replaced the liquid electrolyte with a paste, made portable electrical devices practical. Principle of operation Batteries convert chemical energy directly to electrical energy. A battery consists of some number of voltaic cells. Each cell consists of two half-cells connected in series by a conductive electrolyte containing anions and cations. One half cell includes electrolyte and the negative electrode, the electrode to which anions migrate. The other half cell includes electrolyte and the positive electrode to which cations migrate. Redox reactions power the battery. Cations are reduced at the cathode during charging, while anions are oxidized at the anode during charging. 
During discharge, the process is reversed. The electrodes do not touch each other, but are electrically connected by the electrolyte. Some cells use different electrolytes for each half cell. A separator allows ions to flow between half cells, but prevents mixing of the electrolytes. Each half cell has an electromotive force, determined by its ability to drive electric current from the interior to the exterior of the cell. The net EMF of the cell is the difference between the EMFs of its half cells. Thus, if the electrodes have EMFs in, then the net EMF is, in other words, the net EMF is the difference between the reduction potentials of the half reactions. The electrical driving force or across the terminals of a cell is known as the terminal voltage and is measured in volts. The terminal voltage of a cell that is neither charging nor discharging is called the open circuit voltage and equals the EMF of the cell, because of internal resistance. The terminal voltage of a cell that is discharging is smaller in magnitude than the open circuit voltage and the terminal voltage of a cell that is charging exceeds the open circuit voltage. An ideal cell has negligible internal resistance, so it would maintain a constant terminal voltage of until exhausted, then dropping to zero. If such a cell maintained 1.5 volts and stored a charge of 1 kilom then on complete discharge it would perform 1.5 joules of work. In actual cells, the internal resistance increases under discharge and the open circuit voltage also decreases under discharge. If the voltage and resistance are plotted against time, the resulting graphs typically are a curve. The shape of the curve varies according to the chemistry and internal arrangement employed. The voltage developed across a cell's terminals depends on the energy release of the chemical reactions of its electrodes and electrolyte. Alkaline and zinc carbon cells have different chemistries but approximately the same EMF of 1.5 volts. Likewise NICD and NIMH cells have different chemistries, but approximately the same EMF of 1.2 volts. The high electrochemical potential changes in the reactions of lithium compounds give lithium cells EMFs of 3 volts or more. Categories and types of batteries Batteries are classified into primary and secondary forms. Primary batteries irreversibly transform chemical energy to electrical energy. When the supply of reactants is exhausted, energy cannot be readily restored to the battery. Secondary batteries can be recharged, that is, they can have their chemical reactions reversed by supplying electrical energy to the cell, approximately restoring their original composition. Some types of primary batteries used, for example, for telegraph circuits, were restored to operation by replacing the electrodes. Secondary batteries are not indefinitely rechargeable due to dissipation of the active materials, loss of electrolyte and internal corrosion. Primary batteries Primary batteries, or primary cells, can produce current immediately on assembly. These are most commonly used in portable devices that have low current drain, are used only intermittently, or are used well away from an alternative power source, such as in alarm and communication circuits where other electric power is only intermittently available. Disposable primary cells cannot be reliably recharged. Since the chemical reactions are not easily reversible and active materials may not return to their original forms, battery manufacturers recommend against attempting to recharge primary cells. In general, these have higher energy densities than rechargeable batteries, but disposable batteries do not fare well under high drain applications with loads under 75 ohms. Common types of disposable batteries include zinc carbon batteries and alkaline batteries. Secondary batteries Secondary batteries, also known as secondary cells, or rechargeable batteries, must be charged before first use. They are usually assembled with active materials in the discharged state. Rechargeable batteries are charged by applying electric current, which reverses the chemical reactions that occur during discharge use. Devices to supply the appropriate current are called charges. The oldest form of rechargeable battery is the lead-acid battery. 
This technology contains liquid electrolyte in an unsealed container, requiring that the battery be kept upright and the area be well ventilated to ensure safe dispersal of the hydrogen gas it produces during overcharging. The lead acid battery is relatively heavy for the amount of electrical energy it can supply. Its low manufacturing cost and its high surge current levels make it common where its capacity is more important than weight and handling issues. A common application is the modern car battery, which can, in general, deliver a peak current of 450 amperes. The sealed valve regulated lead acid battery is popular in the automotive industry as a replacement for the lead acid wet cell. The VRLA battery uses an immobilized sulfuric acid electrolyte, reducing the chance of leakage and extending shelf life. VRLA batteries immobilize the electrolyte. The two types are gel batteries use a semi-solid electrolyte. Absorbed glass mat batteries absorb the electrolyte in a special fiberglass matting. Other portable rechargeable batteries include several sealed dry cell types that are useful in applications such as mobile phones and laptop computers. Cells of this type include nickel cadmium, nickel zinc, nickel metal hydride, and lithium ion cells. Li ion has by far the highest share of the dry cell rechargeable market. NIMH has replaced NICD in most applications due to its higher capacity, but NICD remains in use in power tools, two way radios, and medical equipment. Recent developments include batteries with embedded electronics such as USB-C ELL, which allows charging an AA battery through a USB connector, nano-ball batteries that allow for a discharge rate about 100x greater than current batteries, and smart battery packs with state-of-charge monitors and battery protection circuits that prevent damage on over-discharge. Low self-discharge allows secondary cells to be charged prior to shipping. Battery cell types Many types of electrochemical cells have been produced with varying chemical processes and designs, including galvanic cells, electrolytic cells, fuel cells, flow cells and voltaic piles. Wet cell A wet cell battery has a liquid electrolyte. Other names are flooded cell, since the liquid covers all internal parts, or vented cell, since gases produced during operation can escape to the air. Wet cells were a precursor to dry cells and are commonly used as a learning tool for electrochemistry. They can be built with common laboratory supplies, such as beakers, for demonstrations of how electrochemical cells work. A particular type of wet cell known as a concentration cell is important in understanding corrosion. Wet cells may be primary cells or secondary cells. Originally, all practical primary batteries such as the Danielle cell were built as open-top glass jar wet cells. Other primary wet cells are the Leclanche cell, Grove cell, Bunsen cell, Chromic acid cell, Clark cell, and Western cell. The Leclanche cell chemistry was adapted to the first dry cells. Wet cells are still used in automobile batteries and in industry for standby power for switchgear, telecommunication or large uninterruptible power supplies, but in many places batteries with gel cells have been used instead. These applications commonly use lead acid or nickel cadmium cells. Dry cell A dry cell uses a paste electrolyte, with only enough moisture to allow current to flow. Unlike a wet cell, a dry cell can operate in any orientation without spilling, as it contains no free liquid, making it suitable for portable equipment. By comparison, the first wet cells were typically fragile glass containers with lead rods hanging from the open top and needed careful handling to avoid spillage. Lead acid batteries did not achieve the safety and portability of the dry cell until the development of the gel battery. A common dry cell is the zinc carbon battery, sometimes called the dry Leclanche cell, with a nominal voltage of 1.5 volts the same as the alkaline battery. 
A standard dry cell comprises a zinc anode, usually in the form of a cylindrical pot, with a carbon cathode in the form of a central rod. The electrolyte is ammonium chloride in the form of a paste next to the zinc anode. The remaining space between the electrolyte and carbon cathode is taken up by a second paste consisting of ammonium chloride and manganese dioxide, the latter acting as a depolarizer. In some designs, the ammonium chloride is replaced by zinc chloride. Molten salt Molten salt batteries are primary or secondary batteries that use a molten salt as electrolyte. They operate at high temperatures and must be well insulated to retain heat. Reserve A reserve battery can be stored unassembled for a long period. When the battery is needed, then it is assembled. Once assembled, the battery is charged and ready to work. For example, a battery for an electronic artillery fuse might be activated by the impact of firing a gun. The acceleration breaks a capsule of electrolyte that activates the battery and powers the fuzz circuits. Reserve batteries are usually designed for a short service life after long storage. A water-activated battery for oceanographic instruments or military applications becomes activated on immersion in water. Battery cell performance A battery's characteristics may vary over load cycle, overcharge cycle, and over lifetime due to many factors including internal chemistry, current drain, and temperature. Capacity and discharge. A battery's capacity is the amount of electric charge it can deliver at the rated voltage. The more electrode material contained in the cell the greater its capacity. A small cell has less capacity than a larger cell with the same chemistry, although they develop the same open circuit voltage. Capacity is measured in units such as amp power. The rate of capacity of a battery is usually expressed as the product of 20 hours multiplied by the current that a new battery can consistently supply for 20 hours at 68 degrees Fahrenheit while remaining above a specified terminal voltage per cell. For example, a battery rated at 100 amp hours can deliver 5A over a 20-hour period at room temperature. The fraction of the stored charge that a battery can deliver depends on multiple factors, including battery chemistry, the rate at which the charge is delivered, the required terminal voltage, the storage period, ambient temperature and other factors. The higher the discharge rate, the lower the capacity. The relationship between current, discharge time and capacity for a lead acid battery is approximated by Pocket's law, whereas the capacity when discharged at a rate of 1 amp, is the current drawn from battery, is the amount of time that a battery can sustain, is a constant around 1.3. Batteries that are stored for a long period or that are discharged at a small fraction of the capacity lose capacity due to the presence of generally irreversible side reactions that consume charge carriers without producing current. This phenomenon is known as internal self-discharge. Further, when batteries are recharged, additional side reactions can occur, reducing capacity for subsequent discharges. After enough recharges, in essence all capacity is lost and the battery stops producing power. Internal energy losses and limitations on the rate that ions pass through the electrolyte cause battery efficiency to vary. Above a minimum threshold, discharging at a low rate delivers more of the battery's capacity than at a higher rate. Installing batteries with varying AH ratings does not affect device operation rated for a specific voltage unless load limits are exceeded. High drain loads such as digital cameras can reduce total capacity, as happens with alkaline batteries. For example, a battery rated at 2 amp hours for a 10 or 20 hour discharge would not sustain a current of 1A for a full 2 hours as its stated capacity implies. C rate The C rate is a measure of the rate at which a battery is being discharged. It is defined as the discharge current divided by the theoretical current draw under which the battery would deliver its nominal rated capacity in one hour. A 1C discharge rate would deliver the battery's rated capacity in one hour. A 2C discharge rate means it will discharge twice as fast. 
A 1C discharge rate on a 1.6R battery means a discharge current of 1.6A. A 2C rate would mean a discharge current of 3.2A. Standards for rechargeable batteries generally rate the capacity over a 4-hour, 8-hour or longer discharge time. Types intended for special purposes, such as in a computer uninterruptible power supply, may be rated by manufacturers for discharge periods much less than one hour. Fast charging, large and light batteries as of 2012, update, lithium iron phosphate battery technology was the fastest charging, discharging, fully discharging in 10 to 20 seconds. As of 2013, the world's largest battery was in Hebei province, China. It stored 36 megawatt hours of electricity at a cost of $500 million. Another large battery, composed of knee CD cells, was in Fairbanks, Alaska. It covered 2,000 square meters bigger than a football pitch, and weighed 1,300 tons. It was manufactured by AB to provide backup power in the event of a blackout. The battery can provide 40 megawatts of power for up to 7 minutes. Sodium sulfur batteries have been used to store wind power. A 4.4 megawatt hour battery system that can deliver 11 megawatts for 25 minutes stabilizes the output of the Iruai wind farm in Hawaii. Lithium sulfur batteries were used on the longest and highest solar powered flight. The recharging speed of lithium ion batteries can be increased by manufacturing changes.